The Angular 17.3 release is almost here and it takes us one step further in the story for full signal-based reactivity in Angular. These are the new features that we're going to get in this release. I'm going to cover all of them in this video. Welcome back everyone to the Angular University channel. I'm Vasco. If you want to stay always up to date with the latest releases of Angular, then make sure that you subscribe in the button below to the Angular University channel and please leave me a like to help out the channel and give more visibility to the video. All right, so let's start with the 17.3 release. First, with a new alternative to the output Angular decorator. So in a similar way to other decorators such as input, we are getting a simplified version of the output decorator. Let me show how it works. So we have here an output and I'm going to quickly demonstrate that this is working correctly. Whenever a to do is added here to our to do application, we're going to emit here this to do added output and that is going to trigger here the console log. So let me go ahead and let me add here a to do. I'm going to hit enter and as you can see to do added is getting logged here to the console. Now let's go ahead and let's replace the output decorator by its new alternative which is simply called output. So I just call in here the output function and that's it. We have just created here a new output. So this API here is symmetrical to the input API that is signal based. In this particular case, this output does not return a signal. So the to do added variable is of type output emitter ref. This is not a signal, but still it works in exactly the same way as the decorator based alternative. So if I type in here, hello world, you're going to see that the logging statement still shows up here as expected. Just like in the case of the output decorator, you can pass in here a configuration object that currently accepts an alias. So you can give another name to this event here if you don't want the name of the member variable to be the event name. In this case, I'm going to leave here to do added as the name of the event. As we can see, we just have to emit here the new value and the parent component is going to be notified of the event. The parent component can subscribe to the output in the usual way. All right, so now let's talk about the new RxJS interoperability features with outputs. So we can easily create and convert these outputs to and from an observable. We can transform this into an observable and we can take an observable and transform it into an output. Let me show you both ways, starting with how to create a new output from an observable. So for that, I'm going to need here a new observable. Let me just define here a simple observable here. Uh, I'm going to add here the dollar at the end just to mean that this is an observable and let's create here an observable that emits five values and then it completes. So let's pass in here an array. Well, let's even emit 10 values. All right. So this is going to emit zero, one, two, three, etc., and then complete. Now let's go ahead and let's create an output uh, based on this observable. So I'm going to define here an output that I'm going to call counter and I'm going to create here output from observable. All right. And I'm going to pass in here our observable. And now I have added here a new output to this component that I can easily subscribe here in my parent component. So I am subscribing here to to do added, but now I'm going to have here a new output called counter. So this is going to be the same name as this variable here. Uh, and let's go ahead and let's add here a new function on counter changed. For example, let's go ahead and let's pass the value of the counter. And now here, alt enter, let's create here a new method on our application component. So this is going to be the counter, which is of type number. 
And now let's go ahead and let's log out the counter here to the console. We are going to refresh here our application. Let me open here the console, clear everything. And we can, we could already see there, I'm going to reload the application, that the values are getting emitted and that this is getting printed out here to the screen as expected. So what happened here is our observable counter dollar was transformed into an output and emitted all of these values. Now let's do the same conversion, but the other way around. Let's take this output and let's transform it into an observable. So I'm going to call it here the to do dollar observable, and I'm going to call here output to observable, and I'm going to pass in here our output, which is called, as you can see here, to do added. So let's pass in here our output. And now we have created here an observable whose emitted values are going to be the values of the output. Let me show you how this works. I'm going to access here our uh, to do uh, and I'm going to subscribe to this observable, right? So I'm going to log out here uh, to do dollar emitted value. And I'm going to print out here the value emitted by this observable. Let's then have a look at this in action. We are going to go here to the console. I'm going to clear things out and I'm going to add here a new to do to the application. I'm going to hit enter. And as you can see, when I add the to do to the application, we can see that this observable here to do dollar is emitting these values. Let me try here another value. So as you can see, this is working exactly as expected. So now let's talk about what we can expect in upcoming Angular releases. The next likely thing to land is going to be the signals true flag that is going to tell Angular that a certain component is using signal based change detection. Right now, this is yet not available. It should be coming sometime this year. Now with output, we have a consistent way of defining our components in a signal based approach. We can define inputs, outputs, we can uh, do template queries with view child, view children, etc. all in a signal based way. So we have an API ready to start defining our components using signals and effects in preparation for the arrival of signal based change detection. If you want to learn Angular and Angular Signals, check out my website. I have here courses for all levels from beginner to advanced. This is the Angular University website. These are my courses. You can find the signal section here in the Angular Core Deep Dive course at the bottom. And notice here these lessons, some have a P, these are the paid lessons, but many of them, about 25%, don't have a P assigned to them. These are free, you can watch them for free without even having to log into the website. You can find the signal section of the course here at the bottom of the course. Here it is. It's about one hour. This covers the core of signals that is the basis of everything, including what is used internally by NGRX Signal Store. So you can already start learning that. I'm going to update this course once we have uh, these features out of developer preview and probably even before with signal based components. So thank you so much for watching this video. Let me know in the comment section below what type of content you want to see here on the channel. If you prefer longer videos, shorter videos, any specific content that you would like to see here, let me know. I would be, I would be happy to read your suggestions. Thank you so much everyone for watching and I will see you next time. Cheers.